Good afternoon and welcome to Apex Instant Tips, episode 94, brought to you every Friday at 12.05 Eastern Time. I'm Anton, and we're lucky enough today to have our guest Hayden with us. Welcome, Hayden. Uh, good to see you, Anton. I'm slowly reaching that triple digits episode number. Yeah, coming up on 100. Um, and, uh, you know, do you have anything special prepared for 100? Uh, I can only... I can't, I can't divine the future, but I'm sure it's going to be huge. Oh, well, I'm, yeah, I'm, it's, it's, it's going to be big, 100. Um, but today, as is often the case, I've done nothing uh, in preparation for the tip. Uh, so I'm definitely hoping you have something. But I'll say I do have uh, an, a moderately on-topic post-tip. So, um, well, um, you? Uh, I, I do have something. And it, it's something that we, in fact, uh, teased last week oh yes i know we talked about using the apex builder for design inspiration and one of the things we touched upon was keyboard shortcuts and that the, the builder has these keyboard shortcuts um what do we have in that space today yeah so um uh, let's go ahead and share my screen and uh, let's um uh I'll, I'll put you in the hot seat first anton um uh, have you ever uh, built a short uh, a hockey shortcut using apex before well, using Apex is maybe a little bit uh, um, soft term because, yeah, I did it, but Apex wasn't very helpful. I, I built some shortcuts okay, so, back. And, yeah, yeah I, I don't know how common the experience is, but um, anyone who has, um, a, has a history of, of creating shortcuts knows that it's a little fiddly, involves quite a bit of JavaScript, except yeah. uh, as of uh, 21.1, uh, Apex has never been easier to add shortcuts to your application. So wh why don't I start with... Um, uh, I, 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 I didn't even know that 21.1 introduced this new feature. Um, yeah, uh, l l let's start with um, uh, a, a little bit of uh, a side tour through the code, and I'll start my timer. Um, so, uh, And I'll, I'll have a demo of the shortcuts that I prepared. But first, let's um, take a look at the... Apex documentation that they provide. So I have a small bone to pick with, with how buried it is. Um, uh, first I didn't off, even know it existed. So yeah, it's gotta be, I, and I go through release notes and stuff. I, I don't yeah, know. So, so um, uh, MTAG um, provides uh, release notes. And right. um, if I add, type add shortcut, I get nothing. If I go to um, apexoracle.com and what is the um, shortcut URL, it's JS API. Right, for JavaScript, yeah. Uh, which I, I have a small bone to pick with talk that there's no search feature on this on this website. You can't search for a shortcut here. <laughs> but I, I haven't, and uh, and maybe you know enough about this to know that it, that it falls under actions. You might go into. I, I would probably look under actions. Yep, yeah, but nothing. You have to go okay. to interfaces actions. So I don't <laughs> I don't know why that would be uh, uh, such a distinction. And here you finally find the shortcut. And once you get here, it's it's pretty easy because the um, the documentation is very strong. If only they made it easier to find um okay well that alone is enough of a a tip <laughs> but, but, yeah yeah so uh, okay. if, if, you're, if, if your apex version is at least 22.1 you can make use of this oh, one wait a minute. i want to make sure it's 22.1 uh let me quickly double check that oh, okay um 22.1 yeah oh okay i thought we were saying 21.1 which is why i was really surprised 22.1 okay got 22 it. One. Yeah, yeah so um uh, if you're lucky enough to be in 22.1 or above, you have access to this wonderfully succinct uh, 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 code to uh, add a shortcut. Okay, so what have I done using this utility? And let's um, let's get uh, uh, inspired. So I have um, two shortcuts prepared, um, and I will, will, I'm sure we'll come up with more. If I do Control Shift H, oops. Let's uh, run my application. I think, yeah, I, I think you hit Command Shift. But... Yes, I, I did. Uh, con uh, com Control Shift H. I will summon the uh, help of the page that I'm currently situated on. Oh, I love that. And of course, ah. it's um, uh, it's page uh, specific. So on this page, I get a different help. Perfect. Uh, within a, a um, and then within a form field, uh, I can do Control Shift I. And I'll get the item specific page that help for that item, which I like um, a lot because when you tab through, you never get to that. So you you almost it feels like you have to use the the mouse without this. The, this I like a lot. 
Yeah. Um, and uh, yeah, so, so I've got those two uh, automations set up and um, uh, How do we uh, do it? I've, I've documented um, my shortcuts. Uh, when you summon the, the help dialog, you can, uh, I link to my non-modal dialog about page in which I have documented that control shift H brings up the page health and control shift I. So, oh, and I like that it's in a non-modal so that you can keep it up while you navigate the rest of your application as a little cheat sheet. Ah, right. I like and that. I, I'm actually thinking that there should probably also be a um, an automation for summoning this dialogue. Oh, right. Uh, yeah, you could definitely do that, right? Yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah, I mean, particularly once you realize how easy it is. So the um, uh, let's take. Well, it better be easy because you have less than ninety seconds to show us how yeah, to do it. Yeah, with <laughs> plenty of time, honestly. <laughs> so uh, in my um, application uh, definition under uh, user interface. I have um, attached a, uh, a little bit of JavaScript code. Um, and uh, what does this uh, code look so like? This it is just like in your that. static files. You have this file. Just in your static files, yeah. So okay. I have, um, uh, for each automation requires two steps. Um, each uh, hotkey requires two steps. First, I need to add the, uh, the JavaScript to the um, uh, actions library. So. Uh, Fortunately, my JavaScript is very simple. Um, and then once I have it in my library, I can, like, I can then assign the shortcuts to the um, uh, actions library. Right, so, the, so second, the second one, the add item help seems easy to me because it's already an existing uh, class, page item help, that's, that's a class, right? Uh, um, oh, no, a page item help is, is the name I've given to the, um, uh, to that, the library. Uh, perhaps okay. your... Um, uh, you're remarking on, on how this ah, seems, yes. this probably could be improved. Um, uh, I, I, as it happens, um, all I'm doing is I, I'm searching for any siblings of a given uh, oh, okay. item. And it, it happens to be that that would that describes the help feature. But okay, well, I can further add um, a reference to the known um, uh, CSS that all help uh, buttons are going to have. All right, and then the, the first one, just uh, we're past our five minutes and because I, I interrupted you a couple times, but that one, I see that you added this data ID uh, page help. Um, that is true, yes. So um, I, I thought that was the most efficient way to, to reference it. So I, I can quickly show what that looks like. It means um, that under my, oops. Uh, for my menu entry, I have added the custom attribute data data ID page help. Oh, right. Yes. So right there, that custom attribute. And that, that way, you're essentially just clicking that item. Okay. Yeah. Great. I love this. Um, <laughs> yes. Well, I can oh. be long-winded. Yes. It's, it's, it's never my fault. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, you know, Hayden, I love this tip. Are we going to publish the, um, the JavaScript file somewhere? Well... I, I'm certainly happy to. I mean, it's so, there's not much to really glean from it, but. It uh, I think there, I mean, uh, yeah, let's, let's get it. We'll get it out there. Um, yeah, we'll, 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 I'll, um, I'll put it in a gist. How about that? Perfect. And we'll, we'll put the notes in the show notes. Um, and the key is to put that little uh, attribute in the page, uh, in the item, that, the page help navigation bar link. Okay. Yeah. Um, got it. I think, uh, I think we're there. Um, I'm going to add this to essentially every application I ever write. It is a um, thought-provoking idea. Like I, I feel kind of inspired to do the same. Um, let's go ahead and take my screen off so that no one thinks that we're cheating here. Great. Um, yeah. Yeah. I, I think that so long as you develop a good pattern by which you can make it easy for people to reference the, the shortcuts, um, all applications would benefit from this. Yeah, and these two are really good. Con control Shift H, Control Shift I, su super good. Um, I well, I'm going to call. I'm going to call this our five minutes and tell people if you just came in five minutes, beat it now. Go, you know, have yeah. lunch, whatever you're going to do. But I have a couple things um, to to continue um, to talk about uh, for yeah. a couple more minutes. And if anybody else, anybody has questions, um, don't hesitate to ask those questions. Um, so before we hit the half topic kick, I just wanted to let you finish your 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 thought a moment ago about um, putting it in every application. Yeah. So um, uh, 
adding a shortcut, it, it necessarily involves training your users because no one is going to know your shortcuts um, uh, reflexively. So you need to have some kind of design pattern whereby it is easy to access these shortcuts. And perhaps if you, if you maintain several applications, you could have a consistent design pattern. Um, but I, I think that's reasonable. So I, I, the one that I exhibited, I think, is, is a decent one. So you, you have a non-modal dialogue that you can keep open uh, that is available from uh, your help pages. Yeah, you might even consider doing some sort of interstitial page the very first time somebody logs in that that pops and gives them a little bit of information about your um, about your application. Um, interstitial pages are, are a pretty common thing for new users. Um, Rich got a good idea here. Yeah. I, I like that. Yeah. So um, uh, a help a help shortcut on the banner and footer of each page. Yeah, uh, I, I think that'd be good. Uh, certainly, um, uh, I didn't give a lot of thought to it today. Um, I noticed that the the Apex team has has used a lot of the F keys as part of their shortcuts. That's probably a good idea because there's probably not a ton of overlap between um, the uh, the known um, keyboard shortcut patterns yeah. and the F keys. Command X, Command C, Command. Yeah. You yeah, you definitely yeah. don't want to use the like yeah. <laughs> Command S and Command V as yeah. part of your yeah as part of your shortcuts. Yeah. Okay. Um, well, I think this, like I said, I think I'm going to try and uh, essentially do this uh, in, in every application that I... Uh, that I'll, I I'll say one more thing, and I'm going on a limb here because I, I don't know this with any authority, but I think there might be a case to be made that this actually improves the accessibility of the application. Oh, yeah. Um, and I just goofed up and put my screen on. Yeah. Um, I, I think that might be, and I think uh, that's an area that I want to make sure that we continue to research. So I think maybe a little research on how... Um, <laughs> Uh, what what control characters we should use? Uh, <laughs> yes, Ross. Yeah, that's yeah. That, that's definitely going to be one that I, I make use of the control. But, um, that, I'll, I'll use that as my um, my save shortcut. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> um, uh, well, so I do have a um, a little off topic tip. It's not completely off topic, but it's it's a little bit off topic. Um, and that's, so I'm going to, before I jump into showing my screen on this one, uh, I, I mentioned the um, generational knowledge and version many episodes back um, where like the youth of today are going to surpass the, their parents in, in relevant knowledge. And it, as an example of that, I was not, you know, maybe even a couple of months ago, probably six months ago or so, just talking with my son and his fiance. Um, and they're both software engineers uh, in, in, in the space. And I mentioned something about commenting code. And they looked at me with this look that I knew that they were just saying, you're a little bit of a dinosaur. Huh. And so I, so I dug in a little bit. And essentially their position is, if you're doing it right, you don't really need that many comments. And I went and I, I have some, some essentially sample code that is, is representative of the way I might have written code most of my career, but I've really tried to take what they said and, and put it in a, a, a practice. So here, I'll share my screen and I'll show you what I mean. So uh, this, you could, you can imagine add member to policy. Um, and then I would often give a little, you know, a little explanation of the, the, the several steps that this might take to add a member to a policy. I'd say, get the policy, Add the member to the policy and get the member ID back a little bit. Okay, add the member. I think these comments are great. Yeah, they, 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 I agree, right? Now, figure out if the member should have dental coverage based upon the age and plan design. Get the, get the dental coverage age. Okay, get the member date of birth. Um, check to see if the member should have dental coverage. This is a little yeah, bit complicated. Very, but, yeah. It's very narrative. They're yeah. complete sentences. Yeah. Yeah. Or, right. It's, I mean, and this is, this really is the way I have written code for a long time. And I, and I like my comments, but taking their um, little bit of derision into account, I now try to do things more like this. Okay. No comments at all. L policy, get the policy. Pretty straightforward. Insert into policy member. Now, if the member should have dental coverage, then add dental coverage. Okay, and medical is... coverage, anorex coverage. <laughs> <laughs> right, so, I um, mean. And, and then I'll, I'll go further. Um, uh, I think that uh, further um, 
elements of self-documentation that you could add to this is uh, so lines um, six, seven, eight, nine. Those could right. be anchored declarations um, that refer to that that mention the the table and column that they refer to. For sure, for sure, absolutely. Um, and then uh, here's a thought. Uh, all of those comments could actually be uh, calls to um, uh, Apex Debug. Oh, well, here's, and that's an interesting thing, but what I'll say, so first, one of the things that I've tried to do is now whenever I'm, whenever I'm thinking about writing a, a comment, I think, oh, maybe that comment really should be a procedure or a function, right? That's my first thought. But, but right. surely no one is arguing against instrumentation. Um, no, no. But but my point on my point on that is normally my 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 own policy is at the beginning it would include some sort of instrumentation, Apex debug, whatever it, it might be at the beginning of each one. And if you so if you do this, that comment is now inside here, yes. right? Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. So so it would be the Apex debug would be at the beginning of this. It would be at the beginning of this. So yes, yeah, I, I agree. I agree. And, and then it, it's just part of your policy. And so I've been doing this now. Um, <laughs> so I've been doing this for a while now. And I have found that I end up with about the same number of lines of code. Mm. Um, fewer comment lines, but um, <laughs> fewer comment lines, but more descriptive code itself. And um, anyway, uh, Neil, that, that, uh, feels, that feels right to me. Yeah. Uh, so it's a, like I said, when, when you include the number of comments, and everything my my code isn't any shorter, but I do think it's uh, it's more descriptive as the code itself goes. And I have found that I actually end up reusing some of these things like our at RX coverage. I end up using it some other time. So ultimately, maybe my code will become shorter in, in the long run. Um, yeah. As Neil has pointed out, uh, he will occasionally add a joke in a comment. And I. I, I enjoy uh, doing code reviews of Neil's code for that very reason. <laughs> um, so that is my uh, my somewhat off topic or wisdom of the week. I don't know which it is, um, but one or the other. Um, it's somewhere in the middle. I mean, I, I think it's great, and, and I think that we um, uh, we're continuing a conversation that we already started because you have um, we have previously advocated for advocated for uh, commenting codes on this very show. Yes, and I and I don't I don't mean to remove all your comments, but I do think every time you're about to write a comment, consider should this really be a function or a procedure with a really descriptive name? Um, yeah, yeah. Um, so uh, ah, yes, this is a great point too. Young kids are used to the longer, better names, and it, so it just makes it easier, right? If you can, if you don't, if you're not restricted to 32 characters, your function name can be something like. You know, add RX coverage if it, if the member should have it. <laughs> um, but uh, maybe that's a little bit um, silly. But uh, let's see. I had one other um, piece of uh, advice for folks, and that's a truly shameless plug. Uh, and that's that at one o'clock, the In Some Insider is featuring Carrie Millsap um, on the in some YouTube channel. However you got to here, you can probably get to there as well. But Kerry Millsap, uh, I'm sure folks know the name, but he's gonna be talking about his new book, Faster. Um, and Kerry's a great speaker, a great writer, um, and he knows a little bit about performance as well. Uh, performance yeah. tuning of, the, of, of really, I was gonna say of, of Oracle, but his method applies well beyond Oracle. So. Well, um, uh, as with many developers, performance is uh, fascinating to me. So I will definitely be checking that out. Yeah, great. Um, I'm sure nobody, everybody's Friday afternoon from 12.05 on is you know, open for all of these uh, type shows. But um, at this point, people have wasted a perfectly good uh, 19 minutes with us. So we better let them go. Okay. Thanks, everyone. Do all the things. Have a good weekend. Bye-bye.